Right, so now we are here with Holga still uh, with the leg off. Okay. She gives a little cry of alarm because he won't put it back on, but now he pushes her down and began to kiss him some more. She, he began to kiss her some more. She feels dependent on him. Um, her brain seemed to have stopped thinking and was now doing some other function that it was not very good at, right, which is kind of getting turned on. Um, so finally she pushes him off and says, put it back on now. Wait, he says, and then he leans over and brings out his suitcase and uh, opens it up and shows there were only two Bibles in it. Um, he opens the cover, and that Bible was hollow and shows that it had, it had whiskey in it, a pack of cards, a small blue box with printing, okay? Um, and the blue box he put in her hand says, this product to be used only for the prevention of disease, right? So that is a condom. She read it and dropped it. The boy was unscrewing the flask, um, and he offers her a swig. And now she says, uh, had the, now she says with an almost pleading sound, aren't you just good country people, right? Her mom had been saying that about him, that he was the salt of the earth, good country people. Um, and, uh, and now she's using that term as well, okay? All right, so now she's yelling, give me my leg. He says, come on. He pushes it farther away with it. He pushes the leg farther away with his foot so she can't get to it. He says, let's have a good time. Now she's screaming um, and tries to lunge for it, but he pushes her down easily. This is a big, you know, out of shape girl and she's down to one leg. Um, and so uh, he says to her, just a while ago, you said you didn't believe in nothing. I thought you was some girl. All right, now we get to the close of this story. Her face is almost purple, uh, so the blood is flushed. She says to him, you're a Christian. You're a fine Christian. You say one, do one thing and do another. Um, so she's accused him of being... You know, she's using those terms, the perfect Christian, the good country person, to show how dishonest and hip hypocritical is being. All right? And he says, look, don't think that I believe in that crap. I sell Bibles, but I know which end is up, and I wasn't born yesterday, and I know where I'm going. She screeches now, give me my leg. Notice there his words um, at that point, right? He says he's selling Bibles, but he says he wasn't born yesterday. So he's saying, look, I'm smart. I know where I'm going. Um, so she screeches for her leg. He jumps up, and she barely even saw him sweep everything back into his valise. And now he grabs the leg, and she saw it for an instant slant forlornly across the inside of the suitcase with a Bible at either side. Look at how that valise is framed now. So she's got these, uh, he's got these two fake Bibles in there. And slanted across is this uh, this wooden leg of this girl, okay? He slammed it shut, and he swung it down the hole, and then stepped through the hole himself to go down the ladder and out of the loft. So he's leaving her up there and taking the leg. Um, all of him had passed through the hole, but his head, right? That's kind of like a birth image there, too, although a reverse one. Um, he gave her this look. And he says, look, I've gotten a lot of interesting things. One time I got a woman's glass eye this way. Um, so this kind of seems to be his kick, right? Is manipulating girls and taking body parts. Um, so he says, you won't catch me. My pointer ain't my real name. I use a different name at every house. And I don't stay anywhere long. And he says, I'll tell you another thing, Holga. You ain't so smart. I believe in, I've been believing in nothing ever since I was born. Look at that line. Wow. So you combine that with, I wasn't born yesterday and I know where I'm going. And now this line to her, you ain't so smart. I've been believing in nothing ever since I was born. So she says, like, she's only been believing in nothing since she got her PhD, right? So it took her all this education to believe in nothing. But he's this sort of guy who, who's been believing in nothing ever since he was a kid. Um, so he's kind of like this natural nihilist, 
where she's an educated nihilist. All right. Um, so the girl is left there sitting on the straw in the dusty sunlight. She turned her churning face toward the opening. She saw his blue figure struggling successfully over the green speckled lake. Notice her churning face. She was turning purple earlier. Um, this is a woman with a heart condition. Um, who knows? Is she having a stroke? Is she um, simply just having a tantrum and getting upset? Um, how is she going to be able to get down without her spare leg? How is she going to be able to get out of here? They walked a ways um, to get to this point. Um, probably nobody can hear her scream from where she is. She is really stranded. But notice, she was very vulnerable there. I mean, a wooden leg from this era would have been a weapon. I mean, you can hit somebody with that. Um, he could have taken, you know, considerable advantage of her and assaulted her. Um, but that's not what he was interested in. He was interested in taking her leg. Um, all right. So now, uh, Mrs. Hopewell and Mrs. Freeman are out in the yard, in the farm, and they're digging up onions and they see the man, Manly Pointer, emerge from the woods, and he's heading out towards the highway, all right? And that looks like that nice, dull young man. Um, he was so simple. He must have been selling back to the Negroes back there, okay? Um, notice again they, uh, what the impression that Manly Pointer has left with these people. He's dull. He's simple. But he's the one who's played everyone in the family, right? And uh, so that's what Miss Hopewell said about him. And now Miss Freeman, um, her gaze drove forward, right? That's what we began the story with, was her look, um, her look of going forward or reverse, but almost always forward. Now she looks back to the evil-smelling onion shoot she was lifting from the ground, and she says, some can't be that simple. I know I never could, all right? So... Uh, the ladies are there having this commentary on the scene. They have no idea that Holga is, is in distress. Um, and uh, Hopewell said that it would be, the world would be better off if we were all that simple. Of course, that's deeply ironic because he's not so simple, and certainly the world wouldn't be better off if everybody was like him. Um, and then Freeman tops that with her own irony, which is some can't be that simple. I know I never could. Um, and, of course, they've all proven themselves to be simple, all but manly. Um, he's the one who got everything he wanted out of the situation, and, uh, and they're the ones who look innocent and naive here. And there ends good country people.